a territory for God. And I believe I may, I will be able to answer that question today. But um, I want for a recap so that uh, those who never got the message, you can uh, um, be in the right uh, frequency with us so that you understand. Number one, we say that uh, territorial powers control minds and the culture of people. The minds and the culture of people are controlled by territorial powers. So if you want to see the mindset of the people, the belief system. So if you want to understand the power rating, you look at the culture, belief system of the people. Then number two, we say that uh, you understand territorial powers and governing an area by observing life patterns of the people. Life patterns. How do they live? That is what we observe. Number two, we say principal, principalities and powers are physical representation on earth. They are physical representation. So it is not just something that is in the realm of the spirit. You will see it. That is why they make people look like they are physical environment. You may look like you are physical environment. When they look at you, they say you look like you, you are villain. You look like you are town. You look like uh, you are you are you are you are tribe. They see physical representation, see physical representation. So there are some things uh, that uh, happens in the city uh, or in a certain village. And when you try to do something new, they tell you this is not like here. This is not like here. We want uh, we we can't take this or this does not look like it is something like that. So understand this, and I pray that God will help you not to look like your environment. We send your environment is supposed to look like you. Am I talking to you? You are the one to shape the environment, not the environment to shape you. You're the one who has that power. And I want you to remember again, we send uh, in some territories, men are made useless and irresponsible. And you have seen what happened, has happened uh, in central Kenya. Uh, you see around. Uh, there are some places you go, you see men just standing. They are doing nothing. They are not working. They are doing nothing. They are, they are just in the shopping centers, just like that. They are, they are waiting for the evening and then going back home. Others are very drunk by 9, by 9 a.m. By 9 a.m. they are drunk. But they are drunk. They cannot do anything. They cannot work. They cannot do anything. They are just like that. Hello? That is the power in the realm of the spirit. Making men irresponsible and what? Useless. And I think there are some places also you will meet that women are also irresponsible, useless. They are stubborn. There is some area you cannot marry because that woman is very what? Stubborn. They look stubborn. They look crazy. And this is the power of the governing authority of the, the spiritual forces in the realm of the spirit that makes people look like that. Men cannot be responsible. They can marry. You go and you meet men at the age of 40. They are not married. They are, they are still depending on their mothers for food. Have you seen that? That is the power in the governing uh, authority. Uh, then uh, I seen some territories also money is useless. Money cannot help you in some territories. There are some areas you get money, not unless you run out of that area. That money cannot help you. So once you receive money in that area, you feel like spending. You feel like using that money. Hello? I said there are some territories you cannot look smart. When you arrive there, you must disorganize yourself so that you look ugly and so that uh, you can fit in that environment. I was told sometimes at uh, Junja Road, somewhere along Junja, people used at evening to pretend that they are manned so that they can escape. So when you arrive there, you, you take off your clothes and you, you hang them and you start uh, talking like a man, man. Then you pass. Then you wear after that. Because if you don't do that, the ducks will invade you and they will kill you. That is a territory. Are you listening to me? There is a territory when you are not drunk, you are abnormal. 
When you are not drunk, you are uh, abnormal. When you don't have three wives, something is wrong with you. You are not a, you are not a man enough. There are some places you meet girls at the age of that teen. They are mothers. Hello. The powers are controlling them. And they become mothers of tender age. And uh, you wonder. You wonder. You wonder. There is a certain place in Meru uh, where you could meet 17 year old boy. is married to three wives. The powers. 17 year boy. He has no identity card. But he has three wives. And children. Three wives and children. Power. There is a village you cannot escape. Uh, not unless you run out of that village at the age of, of, of 12, 13, 14. You are already an expert in sexual immorality because it's known. It's known like that. I, I, I was times, times back talking to a man and discussing a certain area. That time I was not deep in the spirit like I am now. And I could not understand what is happening. And that man told me, in that time, he told me, in that area, nobody is somebody's wife. Nobody is somebody's wife. In other words, all women, whether married or not married, they are all undaughters. No one is a spirit that is governing an area. And it has a physical representation. You have seen it in some areas. So you get money, you have to run away so that that money can help you. There's a territory you enter married, you divorce. Because it does not support marriage. It does not support family. A place you enter rich, you become poor. You cannot continue with wealth. Hallelujah. A place you cannot build a permanent building. You try it, you die. Because they don't support it. You try a permanent building, you die. The forces of darkness will try and kill you. We said there are some uh, places salvation is not possible in our territory. Salvation is not possible. Hallelujah. Miracles cannot happen in our territory. You can see we saw example in the book of Mark chapter 8 from 22 to 26. Where Jesus himself uh, could not heal a blind man. Was brought to him blind. But he too came out of that city. He too came out of that city and then healed him. And he did not heal him like the way he was healing others. He touched him. Imagine the man touched by the anointing of Jesus and he could not see clearly the first time. He saw people like trees. He had to be touched the second time. Yeah, that's you can see how forces were strong. And then he saw clearly. And then he was told, go back to your house. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody what has happened. So that territory, don't tell anybody in that city. So there are some cities, people are quiet. You cannot testify. You cannot say miracles have happened. You are silenced by those forces because the, the territory is against the, 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 the power or the will of God. There are some territories you only become safe when you are a slave. When you become a slave, then you are safe. But if you try to become great, hey, there is a problem. So once you become a slave, you start serving, you are safe. But if you are not a slave, you are not comfortable becoming a slave, you are not safe. I say there are some uh, 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 powers of darkness or spiritual powers. They are responsible for spiritual manipulations and destiny exchanges. So destinies are exchanged. That's why we saw in the book of Ecclesiastes 10 from verse 5 to 7. And uh, uh, Solomon is talking about an evil that is happening in the face of the land. And say this is an error. And the, his error proceeds from the rulers. And what is kind of error? The folly uh, is held with what? Dignity. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the, the rich are lowly esteemed. And then from there we also understand something very different. That uh, the slaves are riding on horses. And then the, 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 the princes are walking on their feet like slaves. So exchange of destiny. You cannot become great. Then that I say in those territories, great men die and become useless. Great men die and become useless. 
You don't go and meet educated people who are, are just uh, celebrating uh, uh, local brews. They are leaving those caves and, and they are not helping themselves. They talk, their English is being used uh, as they, 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 they share their stories and the experience as they take Chang'a or they take other local brews. They cannot help themselves with degrees, others with masters. They have been reduced to nothing. Powers of darkness. They reduce great people to nothing. There are some places where nothing great or nothing uh, good is permitted. Nothing great. When you try to do something great, hell breaks loose on you. When you try to do something good, uh, hell breaks on you. Why? They don't want good things. They want only bad things. They want bad things to happen. They don't want good things. Bad people are treated like heroes. Good people are treated like outcasts. Have you seen that? Forces of darkness. When you are trying to do what is right, uh, everything is against you. When you are wrong, everything supports you. That's the forces of darkness. Excellence is not permitted in some region. Excellence is not permitted. So you cannot do things smartly. You cannot do things in a right manner. You are not permitted to do that. The powers of darkness will stop you. Will stop you uh, from, from doing that. There are some, 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 some areas that persistence is not permitted also. You cannot persist in whatever you are doing. You cannot maintain it. You keep on getting saved, backsliding, praying, going down. You cannot maintain. Establishment is not a permitted. Everything is temporary. Marriage is temporary. Job is temporary. Salvation is temporary. Whatever you are doing is temporary. You are not allowed for establishment. That is a territorial powers. Then the, the uh, we send again these powers, use existing physical authorities to oppress or to destroy. And we saw the case of Daniel. He started to pray in Daniel chapter 6 from verse 3 uh, to, 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 to 11. You will read at your own time. Last time we had time to read all this. Now, this Daniel uh, distinguished himself from other set traps. He was unique. And what happened? A prayer of one man, the commitment of one man, made the entire parliament to make a law against his prayer. Against him. One man. Prayer of one man. That is how prayer and disturbs. A prayer of one man made the entire parliament to lobby and make a law governing prayer so that Daniel will not pray. But Daniel refused. Refused to obey the rules and continue to pray. And when he continued to pray, something happened. He was drawn into the lion den. And he was aware that he wouldn't be drawn into the lion den. But he continued to pray. And the entire parliament was destroyed. Was destroyed. Why? Daniel was saved by God. But the parliament was not saved by God. They all died because of going against prayer. So we said again, if they feel physically, if they cannot trap you in the physical law, they don't go spiritual. They don't go spiritual. That is why after they failed to trap Daniel, they did not stop. The battle did not stop. That is why Daniel started now to pray. And we see in Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to 13, and also verse 20. When he set his mind to pray, the principalities and powers and the rulers in the heavenly places, they took over now the battle. And I said when the prince took over, the principality of the area took over to stop the angel from delivering the answers of Daniel's prayer. And 21 days, that man was held fighting for Daniel. Hallelujah. To come and deliver the message. So you can see the forces of darkness when they can not use the physical uh, authorities and prevail. They don't go spiritual. And I say when they go spiritual, then the battle is no longer yours. The battle belongs to God. That is why the, the angel, 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 angel Gabriel uh, spoke 
and said uh, that uh, he is going back to help Michael. Uh, who is the only one who helped him in those kind of battles to fight even against the prince of Greece. So those forces are fought. That is where when you rise in the power of prayer uh, at these principalities and powers, when they are invoked, then God takes over the battle. And that is where you are given the total victory. Some of us do not rise to that level. You are only defeated through the physical opposition. Through the physical opposition. Not not through the spiritual opposition. By that time, when Daniel is praying, everybody is for Daniel. Because all those people who are opposing him, they were already punished. You can feel that the physical environment is for you, but when the spirit, but the spiritual environment is against you. So if you cannot understand that, you will not fight and win. Daniel fought and he was able to win against principalities of power. So that is how forces of darkness hate prayer. So if you are prayer and all of a sudden you are not praying, understand you are defeated. You are defeated by the forces of darkness. They went spiritual and therefore you are not able to uh, survive. If you are not fighting any battle in your life, then it means you need revival. There are some things that should be going around, around your life now. There are some battles that you need to be fighting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you move from one level to another. The territorial powers oppress and bring people so low. They want you down. They want to oppress you. They want to bring you down. And that is what um, Judges chapter 6 verse 6 says. And even Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 to 21. No one was allowed to lift the end. The horns would suppress anyone who want, would like to lift up their hands. So they oppress and bring people so low. I pray that God will save you from every form of oppression in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, this is something I wanted you to understand and I want you to remember it as you make the warfare and take the territory. Remember, you can cast out demons. But you cannot cast out principalities. You can cast out demons. You can say, demon, I rebuke you. But you cannot say, principality and power, I rebuke you. You can't do that. Uh, Jesus himself recognizes principality and powers. And that is why he is the end of principalities and power. So when you read Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible tells us we are complete in him who is the hand of principality and what? And power. Look at those statements. Put it on the screen. I want us uh, to see it. Although we rend and rend again. And now look at this. And you are what? Complete. You are what? Complete in him. You are complete in him. And the statement does not end there. It says who is the end of what? principality and power. You are complete in him. So that means these principalities and power, they stop you from being complete. They stop you from being yourself. They stop you from becoming who you are supposed to become. So in him we become all what we are destined to become because he is the end of principalities and what? And power. He is the end. We are complete in him who is the end of principalities and power. Now, for us to take a territory, we must defeat principalities and power. For us to manifest, we must defeat principality and power. So this battle is not a battle of choice. It's a mandatory battle. You have to fight and win for you to manifest. If you cannot win and, uh, this battle, you will never manifest. You remain a shadow of yourself. You will never be complete. You will never be complete. So you are a complete in him who is the end of principalities and what? And powers. You are complete in him. So you have to become to defeat for you to manifest. Jesus himself needed to defeat principalities and powers for him to manifest. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. You can read that. In defeating them. Now, to defeat principalities and powers, you need to understand the spiritual warfare. You need to understand spiritual warfare. Remember, 
The Bible is very clear in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. We don't fight physical opponents. We don't wrestle against blood and the flesh. We fight against forces, rulers, powers in the heavenly places. That is what we fight. That's where our battle is. And we need to put the full armor of the Lord for us to be able to wrestle and overcome. The full armor of the Lord. We have to understand that. So we don't wrestle against a physical opponent. So when your battles are become physical, a, a physical thing is what you are targeting. That means you have lost the battles already. We don't fight against physical opponents. We fight against uh, principalities, powers, rulers in the heavenly places. So if you see a trend that is happening, a pattern that is taking place, a, a, a thing that is happening, understand it is not just an individual. It is forces. And you need to deal with those forces and overcome them and then you will deliver that the mindset of people, you will deliver their, them from their evil culture. But if you don't do that, their beliefs will continue. They will continue like that. They will continue having those wrong attitudes of life. And this will cause problems. So we defeat principalities and powers through uh, what we call spiritual warfare, which is uh, a legislation or it is rule law, not a battle cry. It is a judicial system. It's a judicial system. Not, not just shouting and crying. Uh -uh. The ambassadors, we don't win like that. Jesus did not win the devil by shouting and crying. He won by saying it is written. Hallelujah. He was able to understand what is written. And that is how he was able to win. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to understand that what you go, uh, uh, before I come to what you go through, that when a thief sees you, he wants to break your door and sees you coming, you run away. That person will not stand there. You run away. Somebody wants to pick something from you. When you realize it, the person runs away. But I want you to know that if somebody has bought your property, he has bought your property. Maybe somebody forged your papers or your document, has sold your land, and then you have the original document. And this one has other documents are showing the land is age. You cannot go and kick that person out, the person who bought the land. You have to go to court. It is by the court order that you can be able to evict that person. Am I right? So, understand that. Now, principalities are not there illegally. They are there. They have received what we call legal rights in certain way. So you cannot just come and tell them, go, leave the area. Remember in the time, the major scripture where we were reading is in the book of uh, Mark chapter 5. Remember when Jesus even healed the legion, healed that man, the people had the power to tell him to leave their region. And Jesus did not estate. He left their region. He did not stay with them. He left the region. He was able to leave. They never wanted him. Demons themselves, they asked Jesus not to cast them and not to kick them out of that region. So they knew they needed to be in that region and they needed to stay there. So they earned their rights in the region. They earned their rights in the region. You cannot just kick them out. You cannot just remove them from the system. They will be there. So what do you do? You need a legal system. You need a court order to evict those kind of forces. Now, this is now where many people fail. You go through something. When, when you're going through something, through the oppression of the forces of darkness, some of us are changed. In the state of you, are uh, becoming strong. You are broken. And when you break, you lose your power. You lose your value. Because you went through something and that something was not supposed to break you. Was supposed to make you strong. So what we go through is what determines who we become. 
Sins are made by the process that we go through. And this also are made through the process that I go. So what you go through determines if you become a saint or an atheist. You become somebody who believes in God or you become somebody who does not believe in God. If you are oppressed by forces of darkness and you don't know how to win the battle, then I want to tell you, you will lose faith and confidence in God. You will live the rest of your life complaining about God and not seeing the love of God. So you will begin to see there is no reality in God. There is no true God. And you will start now saying something else. That is where people lose. And they begin to see there is no God. Why? No miracle is happening. Prayer life is not working. Salvation looks very ugly. Nothing is working for you. No victory. No testimony. You are under pressure. The forces of darkness have brought you so low. You cannot lift up your end. You cannot rise. And because of that, you think now, that is how life is supposed to be. That is how life is all about. But you have not experienced victory because you have not understand the way of getting it. You have not understood the way of getting it. And for you now to win the spiritual battle, you are supposed to fight it correctly. Am I talking to you? You are supposed to fight it correctly. You don't fight the air. You him. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 26, we are supposed to fight correctly now when you are able to fight the, the spiritual warfare and you win you become a winner you are able to govern in an area you are able to govern when you overcome you are able to govern and when you are able to govern, that is the time you are able to manifest. Remember the purpose of God is to make you reign through with Jesus Christ. You are supposed to reign. The will of God is not fulfilled until you begin to reign. Until you begin to rule with him. Until you begin to manifest uh, uh, through him. So we need to understand uh, that uh, that, uh, that, 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 that uh, we have to fight the battle according to how it is said. It is not by making noise. We know how to make noise. We know how to declare things. But we make noise and we lose because we use uh, uh, the wrong tactics in fighting and we are not able to get to where we are uh, supposed to be. So prayer is more judicial system than battlefield. It is more judicial. It's about the law. It's about the law, not just uh, making noise. So in the heavenly system, there is a court and we have the judge. The government of God is complete. According to the book of Isaiah, I think it's that 122. The Bible is very clear that God is the judge. God himself is the legislator. And God himself is also uh, the king. So he is the king. He is the lawmaker. And he is also the judge. So he has those systems. He has those uh, three arms of the government. He makes the law. He is the judge. And he is also the king. He has that, those qualities. And he has uh, uh, those powers. Am I talking to anybody in this house? Now listen to me. So once you understand that it's about the winning. Remember I took you on Sunday through a process. Jesus himself came and he came to do three things. He came to overcome the world. To overcome the uh, death which is, uh, uh, is uh, the, 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 uh, brought about by sin. And he was there to overcome Satan. But he was to do four things. But he never did those four things. But but he did uh, uh, three things and he, the fourth one he left it to us to do it and the fourth one was to enforce the kingdom is to enforce the kingdom and I said in enforcing the kingdom there are three uh, ways in enforcing the kingdom one is uh, 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 declaring to the whole world that Jesus is the Lord Jesus is the Lord. And number two is teaching the people what God has commanded. And number three is taking off other gods that are reigning and installing him and, or declaring him as the, 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 the king. And I said so far, the church has not done that. That is why the fear 
of tradition is stronger than the fear of the Lord. The fear of witchcraft is stronger than the fear of God. And I told you an example. If I take this speaker and put it outside there, and then I take a horn and uh, some, some, some bones and some, some, some feathers and, uh, and some, fun, some funny, funny things, and I plant the, uh, and bind them around the speaker, the speaker will meet it tomorrow. It will be there. Um, but if I take the same speaker, I put a Bible and a cross there, and I will not meet the Bible, and I will not even meet the speaker. People fear witchcraft because they are aware of witchcraft. They are aware of witchcraft. Why are we not seeing miracles in the church? People are not still aware of the presence of God. They are not aware of the powers of God. They are conscious. It's not getting connected to the presence of God. And that is why we don't see miracles happen the way we are supposed to see miracles happen. But when the knowledge of the glory of God covers the land, the way the water covers the sea, then we shall begin to see the manifestation of God. And what is keeping us from that? It brings qualities and power. We have so many traditions and culture and mindset of people fighting against the will of God. Am I talking to you? They are fighting against uh, the will of God. Our, our set of mind, the, our belief systems are not in line with the will of God because the powers and rulers in the heavenly places in our territories, they have manipulated us and we are not able to see things at the way God sees those things. I pray that God will help us to win this battle. Say amen. I say, I pray that God will help us to win these battles. So, God is a judge. He sees there's a system governing what is supposed to, to happen. And another thing I want you to know, that you have to get the court on the first. You have to get that paper from the court. And then you go to the field and evict whoever is occupying what belongs to you. You have to have the court on us. With those papers, without those papers, you will not be able uh, to get things the way they are, they are supposed to be done. And now, I want you to know that in the, in the court of God, there is no making noise. There there is no making noise. There is no making noise in the court. In the court is a quiet place. It's the battle of the mind. No making noise. No making noise. Hallelujah. When you make noise in the court, you, you don't be arrested and you don't be charged. There is just the battle of the mind. They are, uh, they are, they are fighting saying, we, it is written, it is written according to this. And they are quoting other judgment that the judges has ever made. They quote those things. That's why the Bible says we are surrounded by the great cloud of witnesses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say we cannot defeat the devil without having written judgment. We cannot. We cannot. It will be a waste of time. We can never defeat the devil without written judgment. We must have the written judgment. Psalms 149 verse 7 and, uh, to 9. The Bible says that when we worship the Lord and praise in the right manner, it says that we, we don't be given that right to execute the written judgment. And this right of the saints. So we have that right. When we get to that level, we have that right to execute the written judgment. We can do that and overcome. Now, Jesus himself defeated the devil uh, through the court system. He did not defeat the devil by just crying. By just crying. No, by rebuking him. He did not tell Satan, go. He did not do that. He, before he told him, uh, leave me Satan. Or, uh, or, or, or Satan, go. He had to take him through a judicial system. He told him, it is written. It is written. Even the devil himself went to that way. It is written. It is written. That is how Jesus overcame the devil. We defeat the enemy lawfully. We defeat the enemy lawfully. We defeat him lawfully. We cannot just defeat him by crying. By just crying or making noise or telling him, go, go devil. I don't want to go, go, go devil. Uh -uh. We overcome him lawfully. It is by the law that we are able to overcome. So we get the judgment from the Lord and then from there we are able to execute judgment. If God passes
cast this judgment in our favor. No one can bring charge against us. No one can charge God's elect. No one, if God be for us, who can be against us? So if God has passed the judgment and said, you are supposed to take this territory, you are supposed to take this over, you are supposed to up this, no one can now overrule that. Nobody can bring that down. You can read at your own time in Romans chapter 8, verse that 1 to that 4. Now, uh, many prefer battlefield. You want to fight through the battlefield because it's a place of multitude. That is where people go. Most people don't like courts. They don't like courts. You will see, when you mention I'm going to court, some people will drop charges. They don't want something to do with court. They fear that. It's because it's not a place of what? Multitude. It's a place of few people. So we like to go there because it's a place of multitude. It is a place where we have company. We are, we are, we are accompanied by many. But I want you to tell you, I want to tell you that uh, it is not uh, in the place of multitude where you win. You win from the court. Hallelujah. I said you win from where? From the court. So God is the judge. If he gets and judges in your favor, then you have your breakthrough. If he judges on your favor, you have your miracle. When he judges in your favor, then the heaven will declare its righteousness. The heaven will declare its support. When, when judges give a verdict, the whole government supports what the judges say. So the judge doesn't speak in, in, uh, as an individual. He speaks for the law. He speaks for the government. And it is when you are charged, it is the government that has charged you. It's through the court. And when God gives you favor, you are a favored by the heaven. And the heaven will declare its righteousness. Hallelujah. I send a hallelujah. I send a hallelujah. Now, I want you to know this. Our battles are not equal. Our battles are not equal. We may be in the same realm. We may be living in the same territory. But our battles are not equal. There are some people who are, are having tougher battles than others. In the same realm. It depends on your vision. It depends on who you are. It depends on what you are supposed to change. There were so many Jews in the times of Daniel who were living in Babylon, but we don't see their battles. We don't see them uh, going through fire like Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It depends on your stand with God. Those who can easily be corrupted, they have few battles to fight. I say those who can easily be corrupted, they have few battles to fight. So you may be living in peace in an environment where you are, are supposed to be fighting because you have not decided to fight. And you may live in that peace but lose your destiny. You may have that peace, enjoy that peace. Enjoy that peace, but lose your destiny. There are some people who would like that kind of a peace. Others should not be comfortable with that kind of peace. They would like to see great things happen for them. So they will try and they will try extra to make sure that they reign. Now, I want you to know that uh, uh, strong cities are governed by strong men. Strong cities and governed by strong men. And when we talk about strong cities or strong villages or strong territories, we are talking about the territory with the treasure. A territory with a treasure. And we know when you get that treasure, that treasure is going to benefit you. You cannot see an armed man escorting a, a lord that is carrying uh, 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 cabbages to a market. You cannot see an armed man following that kind of a, a, of a truck or wherever it is going. You can see those trucks, they can even get, they can break down along the, along the road and nobody is even there to watch because nothing is, uh, is, is precious there. But you, when you see something is caught by armed men, understand that something is very, very important. It is, it, is, uh, it, it is important and it is expensive. So you will not see a kiosk guarded by armed men. But you, when you go to the bank, you will see armed men standing there. Why? There is something that is good there. So when you see some grounds are difficult to break, they carry treasure. 
when you see some difficult, uh, 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 some grounds are difficult, understand the car treasure. When you see your life is becoming difficult, every time you want to venture into something, you have great opposition. Understand your destiny is great. Am I talking to you? When you try something, you never flow. And you keep on asking, why is it that everything I try to do is difficult? It's because there is a force somewhere that does not want you to break through. Because they know when you break through, they're in trouble. When you break through, they are under challenge. So they want to keep you as far as possible from your breakthrough. So strong things are guarded by a strong man. And you cannot enter into a house guarded by a strong man and then plunder that strong man. Until you become stronger than him, bind him and then you can easily plunder him. You can take everything that belongs to him and you can go. That is the scripture. That is what the word of God teaches us in Luke chapter 11 from verse 21 to 22. You cannot just enter into a house of a strong man and take away what belongs to him because it's guarded. It is safe. When this, the man is there, the things are intact. The things are safe. But when another stronger man comes, he binds that man and takes whatever belongs to that man and then he takes it away from the man. Am I talking to anybody in this house? Now, when you see that the, that, the, that any time you attempt something, there is a great opposition coming against your life. When you try to, 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 to get it, there is a, 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 a great opposition that is coming against your life. Understand that there is a, a, a treasure in your life or your future is great. Am I talking to you? Now, I want you to know that we don't just overcome. We overcome by following the right procedure. We overcome and overthrow the powers governing of, uh, uh, in our territory by following the right procedure. God himself, when he wanted to restore everything back to himself, the Bible tells us God was with Christ when he reconciled the whole world into himself. He did not come and make a declaration. Am I talking to anybody here? He did not just come and make a declaration and say, Now I command in the name of, uh, in my name, that let all sons of men come to me. And that was powerful. God and the power to do that. And the whole world would be saved. But he did not do that. Instead, the Bible says, He gave his only begotten Son, that he may die on the cross. To restore the world to himself. So he followed the right procedure. He paid the price through his son for the world to be saved. So he knew that when Jesus would come and die on the cross, not die through road accident, hallelujah, not die in a certain hospital, but die on the cross because he knew the scripture. Cast is the one who is hanged on a tree. That he become a curse for us. So that we can receive his blessing. That is what God knew. He made him the lamb. So that he can redeem us from the world. And take us from powers of darkness. It is by the cross. When Jesus was put on the cross. That he was able to triumph over principalities and powers. We cannot overcome principalities and power until we follow God-given procedures. I say we cannot overcome principalities and powers until we follow, we follow God-given procedure. If we cannot follow God-given procedure, we will not be able to overcome them. God himself and to follow a plan. God himself and to follow a way for him to be able to deliberate the world from the forces of darkness. Jesus and to die on the cross. And when he died on the cross, the devil wanted him to avoid dying on the cross. To give him the world through, uh, without him dying on the cross. And Jesus knew that would be wrong 
wrong. It was not the will of God. Jesus would have the world, but no man would be redeemed because man was supposed to be redeemed. And he understood that not unless he goes to the ground and die, he will abide alone. So he could not take over the rulership of the world that he has no delivered the man that was supposed to reign with him. So the devil wanted to play a trick to Jesus to avoid the pain of dying on the cross. And Jesus knew the trick and he could not agree with the devil. And he was ready to die on the cross. So that the plan or the perfect plan of God will be followed. I want you to know as a believer, anytime you avoid following God's instruction, you confuse your destiny and destiny of other people. I say anytime you feel to obey God's instruction, you do not only conf uh, confuse your destiny, you confuse the destiny of others. Why? God is working with a program. It is already set. The program is already set. There are some things you are supposed to obey and follow as he has done. That is why Moses was not forgiven by God because God had already set a program that Jesus is supposed to die once and from there liberate the world. Moses was told to strike the rock the first time he did it, the water flew out of the rock. The second time he was told, speak to the rock not to strike the rock, but he decided to strike in his state of speaking. What happened? God could not forgive his friend Moses. Moses. He could not forgive him and allow him to step into the promised land. He told him you will see it, but you will never end. Why? That was a mistake. That was a mistake. Why was King Saul rejected? He was told by God, go and destroy Amalek. Go and destroy Amalekites. Go and destroy everything. And King Saul decided to save some animals. He decided also to save King Agag and brought them back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. What was the, the problem? He feared people and he obeyed the voice of people more than the voice of God. And later, God rejected him as a king. He rejected him. Why? He did not follow the instructions of God. When you fail to follow instruction, you pervert the ways of God. And God cannot take that lightly. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be willing to follow the process. Of God, if I'm talking to somebody, I want to hear amen. Now, when you see somebody great somewhere, there is something they have done to become great. <laughs> I, I, you may not understand that, but when you see somebody great somewhere, somewhere in anything, you see somebody great in business. You see, if you sit with a big businessman. In this, in this city, it will tell you some, the story. It will tell you something. When you see somebody becoming great, there is what they have done. It was not by coincidence. It was not just by collision. We cannot collide with greatness. Just like that. There is something we must do. There is something we must do do. If you see a person reigning in business has come to the place of dominion. I always say there is no gift called dominion. We come to the place of dominion by following God's principles. So when you come to the place of following God's principles, you will find yourself in the place of dominion. So when you see a person has succeeded in a certain area, there is what this person has done. Look at the men with the great ministries. There is what they have done. They did not just jump into great ministry. Whatever you just jump into and you don't know how to sustain it and how to get it, you will lose it within time. You will not stay with it. When you see a person in power, more than 10 years, more than 20 years, this person is still strong in business. This person is growing stronger and stronger. There is something they have done to become what they are. It did not just happen. If you just fall into it, you shall lose it. The more easy you get it, the more easy you lose it. The more difficult you get it, the more difficult it is for you to lose it. So when you see a man in some place, 
There is what they need, they have done. Sometimes we can become victorious by listening and following the counsel of these great people. There is what they know that we don't know. Am I talking to you? There is something they know. There is something they understand. And if we cannot understand what they understand, then we are not going to become what they have become. So we are able to become great either by walking with the people going to greatness. Listen to me. We are able to become great by walking with the men who are on the way to greatness or linking ourselves to the men who have already made it to be great. That is how we become great. We follow men who are walking to the way to the greatness. You will arrive with them. All the men who have already arrived, you link yourself with them and you become great. You cannot become great by following failures. We cannot become great by, by going and having association and having connections with the losers. We have to be very wise if we are to make it in life. Am I talking to anybody in this house? Now, I want you to know this. There are four ways that God will help you to get into the place of victory and you will overcome principalities and powers. And we shall be able to look at these four ways uh, today if God permits. Number one, it is covenant alignment and activation. That is the way number one. Covenant alignment and activation. Number two, way number two is what we call divine encounter with God. Divine encounter. Divine encounter with God. Then, then, then number three is obedience to the kingdom principles. Obedience to the kingdom principles. And number four, prophetic grace. Or connecting to higher grace. Prophetic grace. Or connecting to higher grace. They all means the same. Prophetic grace. Or connecting to higher grace. I repeat. Four ways in which we receive power. Four ways in which we get power. To overcome. To overcome. The, ter the territorial powers. How we get. We tap from him. To overcome. Number one is covenant alignment and activation. Covenant alignment and activation. Number two, number two, divine encounter with God. Divine encounter with God. Divine encounter with God. Number three, number three is, is obedience. To kingdom principles. Obedience to kingdom principles. And number four, prophetic encounter or connecting with higher grace. Connecting with higher grace or prophetic encounter. Am I talking to anybody here? Now, these are the four major ways that we can get the power of God that will enable us to come into the place of reigning. That is the way to get into that place of victory that you can begin to reign together with God. Am I talking to you? Now, we start with number one, covenant alignment. Covenant alignment and activation. Covenant alignment and activation. For those who are making notes, we shall read the following scriptures uh, when the right time comes. Joshua chapter 10. Uh, you, uh, you, we, we have so many verses there, so you can just write Joshua chapter 10. Then Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 36 to 38. Nehemiah chapter 9, 36 uh, to 38. Then we have Leviticus. Leviticus 26. Verse 40 to 45. And Psalms, Psalms 106, verse 42 to 46. Psalms 106, 42 to 46. Leviticus 26, 
40 to 45. Nehemiah 9, 36 to 38, and the book of Joshua, chapter 10. This will give us hints on what I want us to understand today. I want you to know that a covenant is an agreement between two or more parties promising to do certain things or fulfill certain promises or obligation under certain conditions. So when we are talking about covenant with God, there are certain conditions that we are supposed to meet. There are things that he has told us that we are supposed to meet. Now, in covenant, the power of the strong is made available, available to the weak. And the weak transfers its weakness to the strong. That is the advantage of the covenant. The power of the strong is available to the weak. It is through the covenant that uh, that thing works. That even the weak is also able to transfer its weakness to the strength, to the strong. Now, I want you to understand that uh, uh, similar wealth or riches is made available to the poor in the covenant. So, we get to tap all what God has through the covenant. It is the covenant is the only way to get into the power of God, to get into the strength of God, to get into the wealth of God, to get with the, into the place of influence of God. It is only by the power of the covenant that we are supposed to come to that. Now, when people enter into a covenant, certain physical and spiritual exchange takes place. So it is not only a physical it is, uh, it is physical and spiritual. Physical and spiritual exchange takes place. So covenant affects both the physical life and spiritual life. Covenant has that power to affect both physical and the spiritual life. In covenant relationship, all the powers, might, and resources of the strong are made available to the weak. So we are able to get all the strength of God, all the resources of God, all what God has, it is made available to us. We are able to get that. And that is where equality is achieved. That is where equality is achieved. So we can now be called sons of God. And that is where the Pharisees never understood uh, when Jesus uh, said we are gods. They never understood what he meant by that. So when we have come into covenant with God, we have come to the place of equality. He has uh, uh, offered his strength to us. He has offered his power to us. He has given us access of all what he is. And we are able to get into that. Now, a weak person can draw from the strength of the strong or tap the resources belonging to the strong that... Uh, that he can too become strong and he can too become rich. Hallelujah. So we can become strong. We can also become rich like him. We can tap into those resources. We are not rich by our own means. We are rich because he is rich. We are not strong because we are of our own. We are strong because he is strong. We are not powerful because of our own. We are powerful because he is powerful. Am I talking to anybody here? We don't win because we are strong. We win because he won. We conquer because he conquered. We are victorious because he is victorious. We are strong because he is strong. We are might because he is might. We are not bite by our making. We are might through him by the covenant that we have with him. Am I talking to you? So it is by that power of the covenant alignment that we are able to overcome the powers of darkness. Now, if we keep our sign of the angry man, God's part is to provide you with power, deliverance, provision, protection, and healing. He is able to do that. If we can put the, uh, our, we can keep our side. We can continue maintaining our side of our, our bargain. Now, our, our own part is to obey his laws. Our own part is to obey his laws. Service and activate the covenant on the altar of prayer, praise, and sacrifice regularly. We are to pray, praise. And also sacrifice regularly. Live a holy life and have faith in his word. I want to repeat that again. Our part is to obey his laws. Our part 
is to obey his laws, service and activates the covenant on the altar of prayer, praise and sacrifice. On the altar of prayer, praise and sacrifice regularly. This must be done regularly. And live a holy life and have faith in his word. If we can do that, covenant will work for us. I repeat, if we are to obey his laws, service and activate the covenant on the altar of prayer, praise and sacrifice regularly. Live a holy life and have faith in his word. That is our part. If we can be like that, automatically we will tap from him. If we can live a holy life, obey, have faith in his word, obey his word or his law, service and activate the covenant through prayer, praise and sacrifice. We become a believer who does that. Then you will automatically tap into the power and the strength of the Lord. We tap into the power of the strength and the strength of the Lord. These are covenant responsibilities which everybody must keep. It doesn't matter who you are. You must keep those covenant responsibility. Now, I want you to understand there are some things you cannot do and not unless God does it for you by the power of the covenant. There are some demons you cannot rebuke. Am I talking to you? There are some things you cannot change by yourself. You need to align yourself with the covenant. There are some giants you can never bring down until you bring covenant into its place. Until you understand the power of the covenant. There are some things you need to understand. When you align yourself with the covenant and you keep yourself doing the right thing, then God will use his power to do what he is supposed to do. Look at that. When you see, the Bible tells us about the jo Joshua. Joshua is the high priest. And this high priest, the Bible says he appears he, and the felt clothes. He was not uh, 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 shining the way the priest is supposed to shine. And now the devil stood against Joshua. And now the angel of the Lord also appeared. Hallelujah. And then the angel of the Lord spoke and said, Satan, God rebuke you. God rebuke you, Satan. This is not the time of Joshua to rebuke. It was the time of God to rebuke. So when you come into the place of covenant, it is the God of heaven who takes over. He does the rebuking on your behalf. He does the battle on your behalf. That is what we are supposed to do as believers. When Daniel saw there was trouble, instead of him praying normally the way he was, uh, instead of him stopping praying normally the way he was praying, he went into the place of prayer. He could not stop praying because he knew without prayer, covenant will not help me. Covenant will not be activated. And what did the man do? My Bible tells me he faced Jerusalem three times a day and prayed. What? Why what was he facing covenant Jerusalem? Jerusalem is a place they believe is a dwelling place of God. It's a place of covenant. Therefore, he was able to face the place of covenant activation and he was able to align himself with Jerusalem. Why do we look to heaven and we fix our eyes and look at heaven? We align ourselves with the heaven and the Bible says that the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven and we want something to happen in our lives the way it is happening in heaven. So we have to align ourselves with the God's power. We have to align ourselves with his covenant and when we do that. The blessings of the Lord will be released in our lives and we are able to conquer and win in the mighty name of Jesus. You look at the Gibeonites in Joshua chapter 10 when they were attacked by the five kings. The Gibeon, the Bible records that Gibeon was a great city. Hallelujah. 
A great city, but yet they entered into covenant. They were great people. And once the neighbors understood, they have entered into covenant with Israel. They decided to go again against the Gibeon. And when they went to go against the Gibeon, my Bible tells me the Gibeonites uh, sent a message to Joshua. And they said to Joshua, come quickly and save your servant. And they spoke to Joshua with that humility. Come quickly and save your servant. That is like a prayer sent to God. That is like a prayer. It is symbolic. It is like a prayer sent to God. You have sensed a trouble coming around your life. You send a prayer before God. My Bible tells me Joshua came with his host and he started fighting the battle on behalf of the Gibeon. Why? He was in covenant with the Gibeon and God was in covenant with Joshua. God released a stone that crushed many enemies more than those Joshua and crushed. Why? They are covenant. I want you to understand when you activate and align yourself with the covenant of God. God will fight the battles for you. God will win for you. God will make you victorious. But when you are playing around with God's covenant, you will become a loser. The battles that you are supposed to win, you are going to lose. But if you align yourself with the covenant, you are going to be a winner. Daniel prayed facing Jerusalem. He was able to win. Give your eyes. They called for Joshua. They were able to win. When the children of Israel, they had broken the covenant. They were defeated by Philistines. But when they, uh, they, they, they made the altar of God and Samuel gave a suckling lamb, what happened? Something was triggered. There was victory. They were able to overcome. My Bible tells me God God thundered against the Philistine. It is God who thundered, not the children of Israel. God who thundered and they, over, they were overcame by the children of Israel and they took them out of their territories. They kicked them out of their territories and they were able to erect an altar from God and I said so far where we have reached, it is God who has made us reach this far and they come the place Ebenezer because they say this is the far the Lord has taken us. There are some territories that have been taken by the enemies. We need the covenant for us to be able to take them over and reclaim them for our Lord. I said we need covenant for us to be able to take those territories. Cities have been taken. Families have been taken. Children have been taken. There are so many people who are captives of the devil. The enemy has taken them. We need God to thunder from heaven. I said we need God to thunder from heaven. We need God to release his stone and crush our enemies that our children will not be free. That our men will not be free. That our land will not be free. We can see even the media. They are mocking us. I spoke on Sunday and I said these things are not easy and they are not, you should not take them casually. When I have spoken this secret, it has gone to higher levels and you need to take it with a lot of weight. You can see they were writing again a pandemic in, in, in Morang. What is that? Alcohol. Because men have been held captive by the forces of darkness. This is the time for God fearing men and women to arise and stand in the place of covenant. I say men and women who will arise and stand in the place of covenant. Who will have their conscience with the covenant of God and they will speak like Jonathan. Our God is not restricted to save either by few or by 
by many. This is a time we rise and liberate our land from sexual immorality. We rise and liberate our land from alcohol and drug abuse. We rise and liberate our land from corruption. It will not be liberated by the angels. It will be liberated by us. We are the owners of this land. God has given us the land. The Bible says the heavens, even the highest heavens, belongs to God. But the land he has given, the earth he has given to the children of men. This land belongs to us. This land does not belong to the devil. This land does not belong to immorality. It belongs to our Lord. And we stand by the power of the covenant of the living God that our land shall be liberated. Our men shall be liberated. Our women shall be liberated. Our youth shall be liberated. We see what is happening in Central. The schools have been burnt in Central more than any other place in the country. We rise. Even girls that we never knew that they can do harm. They are burning schools more than boys. This is a high time we rise. I say this is a high time we rise and we bring down the power of the living God that the mind and the spirit of man shall be influenced by the power of the Lord. Let the spirit of the fear of the Lord come upon the heart of the man that they shall fear God. Am I talking to anybody in this house? Hallelujah. So we cannot fold our hands just like that. And evil. We cannot say our land is safe. We cannot say we are also safe. You are struggling. Am I talking to you? You are struggling. If you are not a casualty on drugs, your son can be, your daughter can be. You need to rise. Am I talking to anybody here? Well, when I say I'm safely married, what about your children? Are they safe as you are? Who will fight for them if you do not rise? This is a time we take the territory from God. I say this is the time we take territory for God. Look at, look at the book of Leviticus 26, 40. And, and I pray that we will rise. I said, I pray that we shall rise. Leviticus it says that if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their, with their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me and they also have walked contrary to me. So in other words, we accept. We have done wrong before God. And says, and that I also have walked contrary to them. And I have brought them into the land of their enemies. If they are uncircumcised, the hearts are humbled. And they accept their guilt. So God is saying, we accept our guilt, our uncircumcised heart. When you are brought into the land of the enemy. It's when you are brought where you are not supposed to be. The, the life of death is the land of the enemy. The life of sickness is the land of the enemy. The life of failure is the land of the enemy. Because that is what the enemy wants from you. And then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham. And I will remember. Hallelujah. He will remember when we humble ourselves. You will remember. And when you remember, I will remember the land. I will remember the land. And when he remembers the land, what will happen? The land. Others shall be left, left empty by them and they enjoy a Sabbath. Uh -huh. you, can, you can stop there. They will, he will remember the land. He will remember us. Go to Psalms 106. So you will remember the land. When we remember him, when we humble ourselves, you remember us. And we need to come to that place of covenant activation. But we are able to take our land from the hands of the enemies. It is not good. It is not safe until we overcome principalities and power. Their enemies also oppressed them. And they were brought into subjection under their hands. And that is what we are seeing. They are bringing many people.
put down. Many people are held by forces of darkness. We are running away from the life that God has given us. People are running away from salvation, from the houses of God, from the place of worship. And people have not recognized the importance of worship, importance of serving God. And there's a trouble. Crises are looming around. Why? We are not aware of what we are supposed to be doing as men. Look at this. Their enemies also oppressed them and they were brought into subjection under their hands. Continue. Uh -huh. Many times it delivered them, but they rebelled in their, in their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. So we can be brought low. We can sink low because of our iniquity. Continue. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. So when we cry for help, like the, the Gibeonites, he comes, the covenant activation is, is released. Uh, uh, nevertheless, uh -huh. continue. And for their sake, he remembered what? His covenant. He remembered his covenant. And he relented according to the multitude of his mercy. So once we pray, he hears our, he remembers his covenant. I say he remembers his what? Covenant. And when he remembers his covenant, he is able to liberate us from our enemies. He is able to save us from our enemies. Go to Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah chapter 9 and uh, read the verse I quoted. And now it says, uh, here we are as servants today. And the land that we you gave our fathers, we eat its fruit, uh, to eat its fruit and its bounty. Here we are servants in it. I like the word fathers uses slaves. We are slaves. We are slaves in the land given to us by our God. We are slaves. We are slaves. Now, continue. Continue. And says, Behold, uh -huh. and it yields much increase to the kings you have set of us because of our sins and also they have dominion of our bodies and of our cattle at their pleasure. And we are in great distress. So you can be in great distress in your own land. You can be in great distress in your own marriage. You can be in great distress in your own career that is divine. God has given to you. But you can be under distress. Why under distress? Because the enemies have taken over. Because the covenant is not working for you. We are a covenant people. And we should bring the covenant play, uh, uh, of God into the place of working for us. If we are going to be different from others. We need to understand it is the covenant that works for us. And now look at what they resolve. These people after they saw that the land is, is, is having increase. The fruits, the harvest is going to the kings. It goes to the rulers. It goes to the people that you are serving. And because of all this, we make sure covenant and write it. Our leaders and our levites and our priests seal it. So they knew the solution to their problems is the covenant. And we need to, to come into the place of the covenant. We need to bring the covenant of God into working. If the covenant is not working, then the principalities and powers, they will continue to oppress us. They don't understand any language. They understand covenant. I, they understand our covenant with God. When we break it, they take over. When we break the covenant, we legally sell our land to the enemies. We give our rights away. We give our legal rights away. When we sin, we give our legal rights away. When Adam and Eve sinned, they gave their legal rights away. The same way, when we become sinners, we, we give our legal rights away. We must obey the law.
laws of the Lord. We must activate the covenant of God that through prayer, praise, and sacrifice regularly. And we need also to have faith in the word of God. We need to obey this word. We need to live a pure life, a holy life. If we are going to defeat the powers of of, of, of darkness. We are supposed to live a pure life. We are supposed to bring ourselves into the place of the holy covenant. And when we do that, that is the start thing stage or the starting level of winning and conquering our Lord. It's our covenant coming uh, back to God's covenant, aligning ourselves with the covenant of God. We can get the right to possess, we can get the right to own, we can get the right to rule. Through the power of the covenant, stand up and lift up your hands before God. And begin to pray that where you have transgressed the covenant of God, the covenant of God, you will be able to come to the place of covenant. I want you to pray where you have failed to pray, where you are. Listen to me. I am standing and I have come to realize this is about David. That's why God says this man is after my own heart. David prayed daily three times. Daily. Hello? And David praised God five times a day. So, he praised God more than he prayed. I wish you can understand that. He praised God more than he did what? He prayed. What was that for? In prayer, when we pray, God can send a messenger. But in praise, he comes himself. How did your husband overcome the enemies who are coming to take over the land? When they fasted, what did they do? The next thing, they praised. They praised. And what is happening to the church? We are taking prayer lightly. And we are taking praises more lightly than prayer. So, some people come to church when the word is going on. They hear the word and they leave. They are not prayed they are not praised. Am I, am I talking to anybody here? They did not have time to pray. They did not have time to what? To praise. The most important part of service is not the word. Am I talking to you? The part of the word is when we are receiving from God. Other part is when we are giving to God. So how do you come to receive from God and you don't give him anything? I, will, I wish I'm communicating to anybody here. You have come to receive from God, but you are not giving God anything. In other words, you have not fulfilled your part. And if you are not fulfilling your part, the covenant cannot stand. Am I talking to you? Tunaeleano hapo. So, kama wewe ume uko na mazoea ya kuingia kwa ibada, ubiri ya kiubiri, utashindwa maisha yako yote na shaitani. Lazima huwe na munda wa kuomba, wa kusifu. Then moyo wako utakuwa tayari, una relax, umefanya your part. Now you sit down to receive from who? From God through the word. Then after you have received them from God through the word, you give to God. Again, you are sacrifice. Am I talking to you? In, an, in what? In that understanding that we have received, you respond. You put a signature. Your heart was ready. 
Not unless we take the laws of God seriously. We take prayer, praise, and sacrifice with weight. We take our holiness with weight. And we take the word of God that we receive with faith. The enemy will continue reigning our territory. But if we are able to do that, God will give us power to fight. And he will fight on our behalf and we will take back our territories. Am I talking to you? So I want you to lift up your hands where you feel you have offended God or you have not aligned yourself with the covenant. Tell God to forgive you. Break that resistance in your heart and tell God, I humble myself. I have acted unfaithfully. Remember me. Remember our land. Liberate us from evil covenants, from evil spirits, from evil forces that may be reigning in our territory where I have not taken my prayer life seriously, where I have not taken my salvation seriously. I ask for forgiveness. I want to take this territory for you. I want to take my family for you. But I cannot do it by any other way apart from the covenant way. I have to align myself with the covenant. I have to align myself with your covenant. La Santa Barabilico, Shakinta, La Banda, Sakita, Rabaya, Sakanta. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh God. Help us, O oh King of Kings. Help us, O oh Father. Ribata Katu, Mashiki Tirila Baka. Mashantai, Rikisinti Katai, Ribakata, help us, Lord, help us, King of Kings, that we bring the covenant into the place of activation and we align ourselves with the covenant. Anything we have done as a church to break the covenant, anything we have done as a people to break your covenant. We repent today. We repent today. Where we have lived an holy life. Where we have transgressed against your covenant as a church. Where we have taken grace for granted. We ask for favor. We ask for forgiveness. Losiri di balaba. Makanta. Satola. Mashikita. Lamanda. Lasai. Rikata. Hear us God. Save us. Hear us. And save us. Save our land. Save our land. Save our land. Save our land. Save our land, O oh Lord. Save our land. Save our land. Save our land, O oh God. From our evil powers, from the rulers, from principalities, rescue men, rescue women, rescue the youth, rescue our schools, O oh Lord. Rescue power, targeting our children, targeting our land, targeting our schools. Rabba Kato Sin, Lamanda Lozai, Mashiki Tara. We come against it. We come against it. We come against it. La Santa Baraba Mashakata Ribakantoa Ribikiza La Mashakata Ribikonta Rabakata Rabashantaya Rikintizikata Rabakatola Shakatai Rimishintiri Rabakata Raba Makata La Kantazia La Mashakata Rabakata God of power, God of grace, manifest yourself, manifest your power, manifest your kindness, manifest your kindness. La Sindu, Haribikoti, Ribashakata, Rikis Indiria, La Baka, where we are transgressed. Your covenant. We ask for forgiveness, Lord. O city riba, mashikita raba shakata, ribi shikita. Where our hearts have become proud, where our hearts have become proud, and we have levitated our hearts above your purpose, above your plan. Oh God, and we have followed what is not right. 
We ask for forgiveness, Lord. Let this land be liberated. Let this territory be liberated. Let men be saved. Everything against salvation, Lord, did we say to God according to your power? Everything against men and women, did we say to God according to your power? Thunder, thunder from heaven. Break your enemies into pieces, Lord. Thunder from heaven. Thunder from heaven. Thunder from heaven. Break them into pieces. Break them into pieces. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to pray together. Father, we pray that our land shall be liberated from the hands of the enemies. Now, drugs, alcohol, and other drugs shall come to an end among men, among women, among the youth, whatever has given them a culture of drinking, a culture of drugs, a culture of divorce, separation, bearing children out of wedlocks, and all these other evil cultures, we fight them in the name of Jesus. And we declare, let our land be liberated from the strong man, from the strong man from the strong man. Whatever is holding men, whatever is holding people, whatever is against good things, whatever is against church, whatever is against prosperity, whatever is against big business ideas, whatever is against our big buildings, whatever is against corporations and other things being established in our city, we come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is against men, and women manifesting in this land. We cannot be producing giants who go and manifest somewhere else. But when they come to our land, they do nothing. We refuse. Whatever divorce this land, die by fire. Die by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is against the plan of God. In God that never created the heavens and the heart. May you perish from this land. May you perish from this land. We speak liberation. We speak liberation. We speak liberation to men. We speak liberation to the women. We speak liberation to our youth. We speak liberation to our city. We bless our soil. We bless our water. We bless our air. We declare our soil is blessed. We declare our water is blessed. We declare our air is blessed. When they breathe in this air, they breathe your word. They breathe your presence. When they drink water, they drink the water in your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, when they step into the soil, they step in this soil and they get influenced by your power and by your presence. We declare the enemy has no power over this land. We declare Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord of Moranga. Jesus is the Lord of our lives. Jesus is the one reigning in our land. We destroy sicknesses from our land. We destroy sicknesses from our bodies. We destroy poverty. We destroy mediocrity. Let the spirit of excellence reign. Let the spirit of excellence reign. Let there be stable families, stable marriages. Whatever fights marriage, we fight it in the name of Jesus. Let the honor of God be done. Let the will of God be done in Moranga. The way it is in heaven. Losili katalibu gotasai. Bless the work of our hands. Bless the work of our hands. I want you to lift up your hands again and declare good things that will manifest in our land. I gave you an example last Sunday. I met with a, a person in Dika town. He has a good shop, very big one, and good and nice, selling nice things. And he told me, I used to be a oka in Murang. I, when I told him, him, I come from Ranga and the church, say, I knew the church. Even when we are, you were at the Mabat church, I knew it. I was living in Moombi. I was passing through there. Now, my question is, why did he not manifest in Muranga? He went to manifest in Dika. And what he is selling, we need it in Muranga. But look at that power that makes them not to manifest the land. They try to fight the land fights them until they, they run to the safety where the, the, the environment can give them advantage because 
the environment here cannot give them advantage. Can we rise again that force that is making our environment hostile, that is making it not to favor people in business, to favor great men, to favor great women. Let, let, let our land favor great men, favor great women, favor great ideas, favor great business. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever fights it, whatever is against it, let it die by fire. Let it die by fire. Lamanda, Kasoti, Kata, Mashi, Kata. This land shall have great things. This land shall have great things. This land shall have great businesses. This land shall have great, great things. In the mighty name of Jesus, big business shall manifest in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands. Father, we thank you because the strong man is defeated. We are taking this land for you. We are taking this territory for you. Big business ideas are going to be established. Big businesses are going to grow. Expensive things are going to be sold here. We declare clients everywhere across this town. We declare big supermarkets, big hotels. We declare big malls to be established in our city. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare in the name of Jesus manifestation of great things. I declare this shall be called a land of salvation, a land of light, a land of greatness, a land of pioneers. I declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because we shall not remain the same again. We are declaring the way it is happening in heaven. That is how it shall happen in Moranga. Their will shall be done here. The way it is in heaven. And so shall it be in every place that is represented by people who are here. For your glory and for your honor. We thank you. We praise you. And we exalt you. In Jesus mighty name. We pray and believe. And everyone said. Put your hands together and celebrate the Lord of heaven. Like you mean it. Like you mean it. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. And God bless you. I send you have your seats. So those who are moving around follow instructions. Uh, our online church, God bless you. And God continue to do you good. I believe you are now starting learning how to fight and take the territory. Number one, we take it by the covenant alignment or activation. And if we can do that, we'll take every territory. If we can obey the law of God, activate the covenant with the heart uh, through prayer, with the heart of prayer, praise, and sacrifice, and then live a holy life, and then receive the word of God, and act on it in faith. We are going to take territory for him. So God bless you. You can give your offering. Uh, from wherever you are. You can send your offering. And God is going to bless you. That's one way. Of aligning yourself with the covenant. Uh, the, the message is on your screen. On how you are supposed to give. And God is going to bless us. And even here. Let us prepare ourselves to give. Uh, the information is on the screen. If you have cash, it's okay. Uh, prepare yourself with cash. Those who don't have cash, you want to use your mobile phone, the information is there on the screen. Let me pray for offering before we release our online church. Father, I pray that you receive our offering. Bless us and bless the work of our hands. Establish us according to your covenant. Let us be able to draw your resources and your strength as we obey and do according to your ordinance. Let your name be glorified, O Lord. Bless us in this mild of divine triumph. Walk with us. Manifest your favor. Manifest your glory. Or manifest your goodness and kindness. Let your name be honored and be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. So our online church, we thank God for you. Uh, you can tune again at 9. We shall be coming back to you again with the transforming service. Uh, you can share this broadcast with your friends. Uh, God is going to bless you. Let us leave our online church with a shout of victory 
from the king's house in Jesus' name.